Good evening, and welcome to Call Evensong at St. Michael's. It's great to see a number here uh, physically, and I trust a number are joining online. This week, we have a guest speaker, David Binder. David spends much of his time as a prison worker, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with prisoners. I also have the privilege of reading some bands of marriage. So I publish the bands of marriage between Jack William Nicholstone and Jodie Lorraine Fisher. This is the first time of asking if any of you know any reason in law why these persons may not marry each other, you could speak to me about it afterwards. Please would you stand and we'll say a verse as we begin. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel.
Our lesson is taken from the Gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter, beginning at the sixth verse. And he went round about the villages, teaching. And he called unto him the twelve, and began to send them forth by two and two, and gave them power over unclean spirits, and commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey, save a staff only, no scrip, no bread, no money in their purse, but be shod with sandals, and not put on two coats. And he said unto them, In what place soever ye enter into a house, there abide till ye depart from that place. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear you, when ye depart thence, shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. And they went out and preached that men should repent, and they cast out many devils and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them.
Good evening, everyone. It's lovely to be with you uh, for Evensong today. My name, as Luke said, is David Binder, and my day job, as Luke said, uh, yes, involves ministry with prisoners in various jails around London. But occasionally they let me out, and so it's great to be preaching this passage in Mark's Gospel this evening. Please do keep the text open in front of you. Now, we live in a divisive world, don't we? I've been struck as I've gone about daily life and observed the online world that the human race has an amazing propensity for division. Brexit or no Brexit, lockdown or no lockdown, Trump or Biden, Johnson or Starmer. And the major theme of our text this evening, too, is division. One of the key things Mark wants to tell us in his gospel is that Jesus is divisive. In what comes before our text, we see Jesus arriving spectacularly on the scene, and he does so with all authority. That's one major reason we see Jesus perform the miracles he does, to show that he has all of God's authority to establish his kingdom. And we see too in the parable of the sower, for example, that Jesus has come in all authority to bring in a divisive kingdom. But how exactly does Jesus bring in his divisive kingdom? Our text this evening answers this question through a message of repentance. Through a message of repentance. And as we begin by looking at the first couple of verses, that 6b to 7, it'd be easy to think that all of this is about the 12 disciples and what they're doing. But who is the one doing the teaching? Who is the one sending out the 12? And who is it that's giving out the authority? Answer, Jesus. He goes about the villages teaching. He calls the 12. He sends them out two by two. And he gives them authority over the unclean spirits. Now, the Queen's Honours List came out recently. And one of the names on it was David Suchet, who I was told the other day has preached from St. Michael's here, no less. And another name on the list was the England cricketer, Ben Stokes. And imagine him just for a moment getting his letter telling him of his CBE. He'd have probably got the letter from the postman or woman, but the authority of what's said in the letter doesn't come from the postman, does it? No, it comes from the person with whose authority the letter is being sent, the Queen. She's the one who gives the authority for the letter to be written. And it's on her authority that Ben Stokes has been awarded his CBE. And so here in our text, Jesus is the one with the authority. The disciples are carrying his words, his message. And so, Having sent out the disciples with his word and his message to the villagers around, what kind of reaction should they expect? Jesus tells them they should be prepared for rejection. Read with me verses 10 and 11. They say, 
Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. And if anyone will not receive you and they will not listen to you, when you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. Jesus is clear. They should be prepared for rejection. They should be prepared for the fact that they might not be listened to or received. And we too, as disciples of Jesus, should be likewise prepared for rejection in our day. But remember, because of who is doing the sending, it is actually Jesus the people are rejecting. This is true both then and today. Imagine again Ben Stokes on receiving the letter from the Queen, informing him of his CBE, dismissively throwing the letter in the face of the postman. Now, although obviously the postman would be a bit affront affronted, it's not actually the postman that's being, that's being rejected, is it? But the Queen. And so here, likewise with Jesus. Now, we may be asking at this stage why the people would reject Jesus. Verses 12 and 13 tell us. They tell us exactly what this divisive message is. It is a message of repentance. Let me read verse 12, which puts this very plainly. So they went out and proclaimed that people should repent. Now, to repent basically means to turn around. Imagine again, we're in the car with Ben Stokes, driving to a test match at the Oval, about three miles south of this building. However, halfway or so into our journey, imagine Mr. Stokes, CBE, realizes that instead of heading south, we're going north. And if we don't change our direction soon, we'll soon be in Edinburgh, hundreds of miles away from where we need to be. He, therefore, while heading northbound on the M1, turns off at the next available junction and heads back southbound, back toward London, thus making it safely back to the Oval in time for the test. And Jesus' message, calling listeners to turn around, concerns matters far more serious than a test match, but our life right here on earth and what comes after. Without this call to repent, to turn around, everyone is basically following their own way. We're Lord and Saviour of our own lives. And without turning around from this and placing Jesus as Lord and Saviour of our lives, we're destined to be without Jesus forever. Eternal death and punishment will be the outcome. But it doesn't have to be like this, says Jesus. Turn around now. Follow him. Make him Lord and Saviour. This is the message that leads to his divisive kingdom being established. And I think our passage this evening is telling us not to be surprised if people balk at this message as we share it with those around us. They did in Jesus' day, and they do in our day too, don't they? This message of repentance divides. Some brilliantly will repent, but some sadly won't. 
And so this means that even those we might most expect to be in Jesus' kingdom won't be, and vice versa. And so we mustn't be surprised. Jesus' agenda is to establish his kingdom through his everlasting rule. Jesus' agenda is to establish his kingdom through his everlasting rule. Let us finish by praying. God in heaven, we thank you for showing us this evening that Jesus' message is one of repentance. Thank you that he shows us that it is this message which he uses to establish his divisive kingdom. Please help us not to be surprised at this, but instead to keep trusting in Jesus as this work continues today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you very much for joining us this evening and it would be great to see you here at the same time next week. We'll end with a verse and a blessing. Jesus said, and who, whosoever shall not receive you nor hear you when you depart thence, shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. Mm -hmm.